Good morning, good morning, good morning! My name is Sean Dexter and I welcome you back to the Manga Grow for your daily analysis video. Bitcoin taking a nice leg to the downside from one end of the range to the other end of the range in one 15 minute candle. I do believe this was happened really, really fast. Happened while I was asleep. I woke up to a nice surprise. But hey, not all that surprising after all, right? And I have to say that I'm pretty proud of the Mango community. I was expecting a lot of panic, a lot of fright a lot of frustration but i'm not seeing any of that in fact people are pretty calm people are like all right bitcoin has done this now we are going to do that and that's the mango way if this then that it's the stress-free way and if you really think about it there was no real reason to be all that surprised right we've been talking about this massive resistance level 10,300 to 10,400 for freaking ages always since 7,700 that was our big Target that we were eyeing. In fact, let me go ahead and switch on over to um, the wheel. This chart's a little bit messy. That 10,300, 10,400 region, it had so much confluence with so much. In fact, it was even the major breakdown zone of this descending triangle that we were that we were eyeing. Everybody was living in it for the longest time, right? So this was going to be a major pivot point, no matter how you cut it. A lot of people are talking about 11,400. 12,000, 14,000, but hey, until we cross that 10,400 mark, I wasn't going to get ultra, ultra bullish, right? I was going to be cautious. In fact, that was the first spot we took profits. Now, was I expecting this move over here? Hell no. In fact, this is a bearish engulfing, guys. This is not looking good at all. The way we look at it in Mango Seed, this is your typical, typical bearish engulfing. And that's not all that has happened over here. In I want to switch on over to, is it the shop? Yeah, Coinbase, right over here, right? You can see that we have now cl cleanly closed, not, not as clean as I would like, but we have not only taken out the wick, this major wick over here at around 9,460, but we have also closed underneath this green horizontal dotted line over here, um, sitting around 9,613 closed well underneath it now we're living against it seeing using that line as resistance not just that if you turn on the mango ribbon okay let's go ahead and turn um let's turn on our default mango ribbon actually you can see that we've also lost the 21 ema and we've been living above the 21 ema ever since this move over here on the 3rd of jan all right this was our first first sign we didn't we didn't play this move we were watching the four day time frame but this was our first sign to be like hey you know what Let's start paying attention. Got the retest and then had the move to the, towards the upside, right? Ever since then, ever since the 3rd of Jan, guys, it's been freaking how many days now? Um, a good 46 days. 46 days we've been living above the 21 EMA. We have now officially closed underneath it. That is a change in trend, right? By the definition of it. 46 days living above it and now finally closing underneath it. Can we have an open and a close underneath this now? That's how we look for confirmation over here, right? Could this just be one mega trap and we close above it? It could very well be. And what do you do when, when, when there's a trap like that? You do nothing. You just get trapped and you move on with your trading system, all right? Just keep keep doing the same thing over and over again that's what your edge is there for to win over the long run not win every single trade so let's do a summary of what's going on over here on the chart right now on the daily we have closed underneath the 21 ema we've not done that for 45 days we have also lost this major level over here at around 9600 we have also put also put in a swing lower high right over here at our major major resistance point right around 10,300 10,400 this entire zone that we've been eyeing for so freaking long so when you put the entire picture together it does look like we have trended we are also watching this rising channel right this rising channel that um, again I'm not gonna go ahead and draw the pattern the actual pattern doesn't mean much to me it's the trend meaning of the pattern right so we talk about Again, this is another thing I go over um, much, much more detail in the trend, uh, trend analysis module, the advanced trend analysis module. These patterns are put together and people look at the pattern and say, oh, this is a bearish pattern. It's not a bearish pattern, guys, until 
it breaks the trend within the pattern it's the break of the pattern that makes it a bearish pattern all right not just the pattern alone which is why you always wait for that confirmation right so what have we done over here we have a rising channel with higher highs higher lows we have a high over here a low over here a lower high now and a lower low this is a break of a rising wedge a rising ch a channel whatever you want to call it and the overall picture is telling us that hey you know what um, we may may very likely be having a move towards the downside over here now again the word likely is very key the word probable is very key this is the picture on the daily time frame and i i will get back to this in a bit but i do want to tell you guys based on that picture based on that picture i was very very happy to take profits off the table over here and wait patiently these profits um usually usually if if i didn't have as thick of a position um, as I did, I would have been like, you know what? Let me see how it goes. I want to see whether the weekly, the weekly level that I'm about to talk about in a bit will step in and actually see us get that up thrust. But this early in the year, I, I'm just, I'm just uh, telling you guys how trading is not as black and white as people think it is. Okay, this early in the year when the market has given given me these many profits, this much um, to hold on to that I can take off the table that will make the rest of my year pretty much stress free. I pretty much don't have to trade for the rest of the year now. Um, just based on how I played this, all right. Just how uh, now. Usually, usually I would have waited for a bigger move, but that would have also been me um, having a smaller position, right? For example, for if I'm playing an altcoin, I would not have as big of a position as I did on my BTC position. But over here, I'm pretty happy to sit back and wait and see how the market reacts to the higher time frame levels now. Okay. Now, going on that note, when a trend changes on the lower time frames, even though the daily may suggest a move all the way down to the 8,000, 8,600, 8,500 region, this, this cluster over here, you have your daily 200 moving average, you have your daily key zoom. These are good targets to be looking at if you're playing the daily. You always have to keep in mind, guys, that the higher time frames may always step in, always step in and cut the trend reversal short of the lower time frame. All right. So, for example, let me go ahead and draw it. Let's say you have the four hour time frame um, trending up like this, but but the higher time frame, the higher time frame, the daily or the weekly is actually trending down. And this over here that you're looking at on the four hour time frame is actually just um, a small juncture over here on the daily time frame or the weekly. The weekly or the daily may step in. Okay, and stop the uptrend of the four hour, even though you have a um, higher, higher target for your four hour time frame. Everything about your four hours telling you that, hey, you know what, this is likely going to go up um, another 20%. All right, you have to keep an eye on the higher time frames, all right, because the higher time frame trend may step in at any time and take over. Okay, so. With that, with, with that, with that little piece of theory, okay, that I, I had to be very brief with it. I'm sorry, guys, these videos can be only that long. Um, with that piece of theory in mind, keep in mind that yes, um, now we have broken the trend on the daily. We have broke, broken the trend on the daily, but there are some weekly structures in place that we haven't cleared just yet. Now, there, if you want to be a little bit aggressive, a good shot is basically right now. Hey, this is looking good. You can shot against this green line against the daily 21 EMA. Okay, that's very aggressive in my opinion because you don't even have the open and the close yet. Who knows? Maybe we may make a move up to the tankin, test the tankin, and that's a better entry if you want to be aggressive as a, in your shot, but not as aggressive. The best, the best, um, if you want to play the daily alone, the best thing to do. Again, none of this is financial advice. Don't listen to me at all. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I have no idea. I'm just rambling. I've I have no idea what I'm talking about. This is not financial advice. Um, what I would what I would do if I was playing daily and being a little aggressive um, at the same time was wait for the open open and the close and then wait for that. Okay. Now, for me to flip shot, for me to flip shot with what uh, my strategy is currently, I am looking at the weekly guys. Okay, I'm looking at the weekly level, and even though we have done something something pretty significant on the daily. The weekly is showing me that, hey, we have support right around this area here. In fact, we bounce off this area for a reason. I know some people are saying liquidity hunt. I don't think this was a liquidity hunt, guys. I really don't think so. I think this was a um, breakdown, in my opinion. Okay, we have major resistance over here. We try, we swung high, we swung high again, and we fill the gap on CMEs too. But again, I don't want you guys to, you don't need to watch CMEs to, con to simply at all complicate your trading all right you don't need that look at look how, uh, how clean this is okay 
and now we've closed on either 21 EMA. If this was a liquidity hunt, we would have seen a bounce and close above both the Tenkin and the 21. We did not do that. I'm not liking this at all, but at the same time, I'm not too keen to be shorting here either because let's go back onto the weekly. I do have a chart open for you guys right over here. This is the weekly now. Okay, this is the weekly and I'm gonna hide the mango ribbon for a second. And look at this horizontal that we've been eyeing for the longest time on the weekly time frame, right? It's right over here at 9,500, guys. It is these guys over here. It is these guys over here. Yes, this makes things a little bit difficult, but these are the times where you want to be a little patient. So how do you play this? We have a weekly support at around 9,300, 9,200-ish, but we have also break, broken daily structure. So how do you play this? Well, in my opinion, my opinion, if you want to get aggressive, uh, no, don't say aggressive, right? The aggressive players to play the daily. The play, my play, my play at the very least would be to wait for a weekly break of the structure here. So a weekly close underneath, underneath, okay. And then you see that bounce, okay. You're likely going to see a bounce. Things don't, uh, things could go down in a straight line. We saw it right here. If you do, if you do get that opportunity to see the bounce to 9600 after that on the daily time frame, then you can take that play, okay? Then you can take that play. So essentially, what am I saying? Um, I'm basically saying a weekly close underneath here. We, the next week starts again and tests the 9600. That's when you take your play. That way you have a close underneath a weekly structure going in your favor. And as well as a daily structure, you're basically trying to short into the lower high that may be following after, right? So let's go on over to the daily chart now again. So what am I saying? We have 9,300 somewhere around here. We're gonna see a weekly close underneath here, a bounce to this level over here, okay? Essentially, at that point, I'd be looking for a low high and then look for this move down to um, 8700. And I'd be looking to um, take some profits off the table. This is just me brainstorming my ideas. I, of course, have to sit down and be a little bit more concrete with it, right? But we have daily key junior, um, daily 200 over here. And we also have some major weekly levels over here, guys. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget... Um, going over to the weekly we have the weekly 21 ema the weekly 10 sma the weekly tank and the weekly key so this is going to be a major target for me now there are two ways you can play this right this is this is a target not just for shorting into and taking profits but also just being patient and trying for another long over here does it need to pan out no but in my opinion this is a high probability play look at that look at that look at that it's it's, it's bunched up there just for you to try try a nice long opportunity for the long run right so i'll be looking at that as well i also want to remind you guys that we were very very clear on hey wait for the monthly guys wait for the monthly um because the monthly is telling us that we have resistance right over here on the ski june let's go ahead and switch it up hide the horizontals right over there right at um 9919 and it does look like we may close the month we have what eight days now eight days left before the month could close and this month is looking like the Kijun got rejected and this is what exactly what I mean you need to you need to be patient so much can happen in such a short period of time I said it would be fantastic completely fantastic if we actually did close over that and up until yesterday it was looking like hey maybe maybe we might maybe we might but again you cannot front run those front run those things okay so 10 sma on the monthly coming in at 8999 let's see if that gets supported actually it would be it would not be the best look if we lose that it would not be the best look if we, if we, if we lose that so let's keep an eye on that guys um perhaps you guys can remind me in the comments in the mango grove in the in, in the discord chats Go ahead and remind me. Um, I'm, I, I tend to make mistakes too. I'm going to note it down anyways. But I want to see this monthly get defended around. Let's go ahead and look at the exact number. It's 9,004 on Bitstamp. Okay, 9,004. So let's uh, keep an eye on that weekly. We could wick down to the weekly level at 8,000. Sorry, the 10 kin on the monthly at 8,555. So that's a possibility too. So we're seeing a lot of support come in. A lot of support. would that be an ugly picture? Would that be an ugly picture if we have a wick down over here but close above the 10 SMA? That would be nice, eh? That would be nice. So things may actually happen faster than we think. <laughs> if this candle ends up looking like this guy over here, like this cross over here, and we close right over the 10 SMA, I think that would be a good look for continuation, okay? Because this is an indecision candle. The bears tried. When you see an indecision like that on the monthly, I usually, I, I usually lean towards the upside and continuation, okay? So um, that's that on the monthly. We talked about the weekly. I did want to talk about a couple other things, but I'm forgetting yet again. Let's go back on over to the daily 200 MA. Kijun, what is it? What is it that I'm forgetting? What is it that I'm forgetting? I don't know what I'm forgetting. Oh yes, I remember now the weekly mango ribbon. There 
was something there has been something that i've been eyeing for a while now i was actually looking um to take a play off it but unfortunately the play happened while i was asleep and i didn't get the chance so essentially what i've been doing i've been keeping an eye on the seven exponential moving average okay so what i want you guys to do is turn on your mango ribbon okay and essentially turn everything else off okay i have everything else off over here turn everything else off you can keep your kijun on if you want to keep your kijun on keep your teal ema on over here and switch it up to seven okay EMA EMA3, switch it up to 7. That's all you have to do. Okay, that's all you have to do. And turn the mango ribbon on right over there. And you're going to see that when Bitcoin starts an aggressive uptrend, okay, when it, this is a way for you to um, find out whether the trend is aggressive or not and whether you should be, whether you should consider the asset a strong asset to be buying bounces. Every time it has started an aggressive trend, it's been picked up on the 7 EMA, okay? Boom, got rejected on the Kiju right over there. Bounce, tested the 70 EMA right over here, closed over, closed over again after giving it two tests. Okay, closed over the Kijun twice after giving the 70 EMA two tests, and then had the up trust to your next major level, 9,500, right? Broke it. Where do we come down to test again recently? Just last night, the 70 EMA giving a really nice bounce, a $300 bounce again. And again, right now, when you look at this this um, chart over here, we're living above that weekly level, right? So what, what have we been doing? We've been breaking a level, Testing it, closing above the next major level. Testing it, closing above. Tested the next major level, broke above it, tested the 70 EMA. Now the question is, do we, do we, do we um, actually bounce again? What I was looking for was basically the perfect play would have been for me to be able to get out of my trade, get out of my get out of my trade at around um, whatever the daily structure, whenever the daily structure was broken at. So over here it was nine thousand six hundred, and then be able to reposition at nine thousand three hundred. But all of that happened literally in one move, and we had the bounce to um, nine thousand six hundred again, right? So I missed it. But now I will be watching very very patiently. Okay, this is one of the reasons why I'm not too keen on getting into a short trend over here. I know people might be keen because hey. I am bearish, I've been bearish ever since the existence of Bitcoin and now this is my opportunity to be right again. But I am look I'm not I don't want to be right, guys. I just want to make money the stress-free way, the easy way, the mango way, right? And taking a shot over here is not stress-free. We could bounce at any point over here. We could bounce at this level at 9500 ish We could bounce over here again at 9300 And hey, underneath as well, we have 8700 Kijun, right? Again. If we actually break the structure over here and then get a test for 9,600-ish, then I would try or attempt for a short. That would be my play. Why? Because I have a $1,000 move towards the downside and that edge is worth it for me, okay? Right now, I'm not too keen at all. I do want you guys to keep an eye on something, okay? Notice how we have pretty much been in an uptrend, basically just going up, 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 made a high over here, okay? Made a high over here at um, around 10,500-ish. But we have yet to confirm a proper swing higher low, okay? Where do we put that higher low? Is it on the Kijun or is it right over here, right? We don't know where it's going to come in. I'm waiting to see that. I'm waiting to see that because the last, you could argue that a low was over here at 8,200, but the real low was somewhere around here, guys, okay? I'd say this low. This is the low right over here at 6,430. Ever since then, we've just been going up, 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 up. We have now finally confirmed a high over here. Now, where do we put in a higher low? If, if, I want you guys to think about this. What if we put in a higher low over here and then have another thrust up? What's that going to look like to you guys? This is your inverted head and shoulders. I know a lot of people are calling inverted head and shoulders and Adam Eve before that. I never even entertained that idea. But now it's looking very, very clear. You also have the volume to match it. Okay. I would want to get Krisha's opinion on this as well. I actually haven't shared this idea with her, but now this is beginning to look like it, right? In fact, even if we actually come down to the Kijun and bounce again, boom even clearer right sometimes it does get as simple as that and then we can look for a break to the upside because now a second attempt a second attempt at that 10,400 10,300 weekly level would be my guess that we actually break it or it could be a trap who knows right either way i'd be looking to have a, i'm be looking for a long play over here okay i missed my opportunity over here do we grind somewhere around there I don't know, I don't know. If we do, I don't think I'd be too interested over here, guys. I'd be looking for a play over here.
here if we bounce over here i'd be looking for a daily um retake of structure and then try for another attempt okay i'm willing to buy higher i'm willing to buy higher i have no qualms i'm already in btc remember guys i have spot btc so if it keeps going without me i'm not gonna be following there's no reason to be following okay not when you have bitcoin as your general hold okay so um that's that's pretty much i don't want to spend too much time on this because there are other things i do want to talk about i also want to take a look at link um chain link i want to see how strong that asset is doing so here we have uh, a potential inward head and shoulders we are sitting on on weekly structure over here 9500 horizontal has not been broken just yet we haven't closed the week underneath it we also have 9300 as support as a support region and also your 70 ma right over there guys and this is the really really key area for me at around 8500 ish okay so that's your quick summary on Bitcoin. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Mango Research dashboard actually and see. Um, okay, by the way, guys, quick update for you guys. We have updated the Mango Research dashboard. We have made things a little bit more intuitive. It tells you the trend reversal date over here now. We also have a filter option and this is going to be awesome. Um, it's going to be very, very convenient, especially for me. Uh, when I'm looking for a certain coin, I'm, I want to say, hey, how's BDC doing? I can just type BDC, boom, and look how fast and snappy it is. I really, really like that. How's Ada doing? And boom, okay, Ada, uh, how's Link doing? <laughs> and Link, damn, still telling you that the trend is still long, and the trend has been <laughs> long since the 27th of Jan. Link BDC and Link USD, both of them. Let's go ahead and look at Link BDC, actually. Look at it on the daily. Actually, I'll start on Link USD because I know a lot of you prefer Link USD, uh, trade Link USD. And this is looking so strong, man. Holy. I wasn't expecting <laughs> I wasn't expecting this but link this is strong like again this is really strong and um, the only reason this didn't see continuation on, and hit a target of five dollars and eight cents is probably because of what Bitcoin did right but you're seeing it get picked up on the tennis me yet again does it roll over though does it roll over you're seeing one two three pickups does it roll over does it bounce over here let's go see what the lower time frames are saying and I do want to hide the mango ribbon for now so I can just look at the naked chart hi low higher high higher low over here i, I would want to see this break this green horse on and start living above that though okay if we take out this low over here i'd be looking for a target for three dollars and five cents so three dollars and fifty cents so the key target to be defending right now is three dollars and eighty six cents if we do come over there that is the bottom of the range the middle of the range is four dollars and fifty cents and the top of the range can't be sitting at around four dollars and ninety cents five dollar mark okay so do we bring this um yellow horizontal down a little bit lower let's go ahead and look at the daily no i would not do that but i would put i would put uh, some emphasis on this wick over here at around four dollars and 88 so basically you're playing a dollar range between three dollars and 88 and four dollars and 88 if we break this high over here i think we're definitely going to five dollars and ten cents where we may or may not see some resistance it'd be good to see but when when the asset is looking this strong even if we do see some resistance i do think it'll be short-lived the middle of the range that chain link is sitting underneath right now is four dollars and fifty cents so you have three dollars eighty cents to the downside four dollars and fifty cents to the um to the middle of the range and three dollars four dollars and eighty eight cents to the higher the range it's literally a dollar range here it's really easy to play this range chainlink has always been such a beautiful beautiful chart guys um you got this is one of the reasons why i love it okay so um yep that's chainlink usd let's go ahead and uh, look at chainlink bdc now link bdc Need I say much? Need I say much? So strong, not even coming down to the ten SME. Like this is this is basically saying, hey guys, I don't um hey Bitcoin, I don't care what you're doing, I don't care at all what you're doing. I'm just gonna keep going up and up and up. And it, it was evident, right, that Link BDC was going to look good considering Link USD was looking so good and Link and BDC had a move to the downside. And um, is this is this putting in something like this though? You have to keep an eye on this because. Let's go ahead and look at the lower time frames. Does it capture anything? Oh, I already have something drawn out on the lower time frames. Let me delete this for now. So hide the mango ribbon as well. We did have a channel over here. I believe I, I drew it on the one hour time frame. And it looks like, have, we, have I drawn this well? Again, guys, this is lower time frame stuff. So be very, very careful. I would say, yeah, if you can start confirming multiple candles underneath here, I would think this was coming down. And we do have a measured move for this on Link PDC. That would be saying somewhere around 43,134 Satoshi. Is that anything on the four hour time frame? Let's go ahead and see. Um, not really. Perhaps these guys over here, but not really. 
on the EMAs. I'd actually be looking for this to come down to at least the, at least a tankin. If we lose a tankin, definitely the Kijun. Okay, the, as you can see, the Kijun would be a major, major area that we do not want to lose on the four-day time frame. Link BDC kind of looking weak over here on the low time frame, looking droopy. The daily too, looking like um, this could go either way. This okay. So forty-three thousand Satoshi. There you go. Forty-three thousand Satoshi is the daily SMA. Okay, is the daily SMA. So this this over here, this channel over here that looks like it has broken down to the downside is pointing down to a test of the daily SMA that's how you see the lower time frames cascade onto the high time frames and then I'd be looking for link BTC to get picked up over here at 43,000 Satoshi for those of you who do not have a position yet yet on link this would be a good position to be adding if we lose a 10 SMA next target would be the 10 in 21 EMA be looking for a small bounce over there as well that does line up with this major level over here of 38,000 Satoshi, which is the major level on the weekly. The basically a retest of this massive, massive move that we've um, been this ascending triangle cup and handle within the ascending triangle broke on over to the upside. We had a target for around 54,000 Satoshi. Do we see that? Do we see a bounce over here and then get to it? Hey, perhaps. So that's a link PDC that um, is link USD that is Bitcoin as well. Let's go ahead and look at the Mango Research dashboard. I'm interested to see how ETH is doing because ETH has been a beast and telling you exactly what you want to see, right? <laughs> ETH has been very, very surprising. Okay, it's still telling you that it's long. It's still telling you um, that the USD pairing is in a long structure, long trend, and the Bitcoin structure, Bitcoin pairing is also in a long, a long trend. Do I do an analysis of this right now? This video has already gone in far too long. Leave a comment down below if you guys want me to do a separate video on ETH USD and ETH BTC. I'll be happy, happy to do it as long as you guys want to see it. Until then, guys, my name is Sean Dexter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, we are sitting on weekly support on Bitcoin until we close on 9,500. We have not lost it. Um, we also have 9,300 that we have already bounced off. So patience now is the name of the game. Just be patient. I am going to enjoy the rest of my day. Hopefully, I'll tell you guys my honest, um, biased opinion on what I want Bitcoin to do. I want Bitcoin to simply grind and do nothing, do nothing. I've had some really good profits and I want to enjoy them for a bit. I do not want to be... I'd rather Bitcoin, kind of like what Bitcoin did over here in December, gave me the perfect, perfect month, allowed me to enjoy my favorite month of the year. I could use, I could use a break now, <laughs> to be honest. This has been a good trend to enjoy, but sometimes trading the trend gets mentally exhausting, right? And it has been <laughs> mentally tiring. You guys know about, I talked about my, um, almost my, my my turbulence over here at 10,300 almost messed up almost did not stick to my plan and then again uh, made a small mistake at around 9,600 fixed it but as long as I stick to the plan and I, I fix fix my mistakes fast right I don't have to feel the pain and you guys are seeing an example of that watch the previous videos my name is Sean Dexter throw a like throw a subscribe we will see you guys in the next video bye